Tom Sawyer, Chapter 11, Found. A few hours later, Becky woke up. She was starving, but eager to look for a way out of the cave. Tom had a piece of cake left from the picnic. I wish it was as big as a barrel, he said. But something's better than nothing. He divided the cake, and they ate. They started to walk again. Once in a while, Tom gave a shout. The cave walls threw his voice back a dozen times. It sounded as if someone were laughing at them. Don't, Tom, said Becky. It sounds so terrible. Someone might hear us, Becky, Tom said, and he gave another shout. Tom and Becky walked hand in hand. They didn't know which way to go. They just kept walking. Tom tried to guess how much time had gone by. Had they been in the cave for two hours or two days, time seemed to be standing still. Suddenly there was a spring at their feet. They both drank some water. I have to tell you something, Becky, said Tom. Don't get upset. Becky's face was pale. Her eyes were big with fear. Our last candle will soon be gone, said Tom. We have to stay by this spring, but at least we'll have some water to drink. Becky started to cry. Tom tried to comfort her. The last candle was burning down quickly. The flame melted the candle and died out. The cave was completely dark. Tom and Becky sat quietly and waited. Hours seemed to go by. Suddenly, Tom said, Shh! Did you hear that? The children held their breath and listened. They heard a far-off shout. It was faint, but it was in the cave. Someone's coming to get us, Becky, said Tom. We'll be all right. The two walked slowly toward the voice. Without light, they had to feel along the cave walls. They placed each foot down carefully. Tom had an idea. He had a kite string in his pocket. He gave one end to Becky and told her not to move. Tom took the other end and crawled away. Tom was going to get them out. He was going to find the voice. Tom crawled along a ledge. Around the corner, he saw faint candlelight. Suddenly, someone appeared from behind a rock. Tom shouted, This was it! They were rescued! The person stood up. Tom froze. He couldn't move a muscle. It was Injun Joe. But Injun Joe didn't see Tom. Tom turned and quickly crawled back to Becky. He didn't tell her that Injun Joe was in the cave with them. Tom and Becky drank from the spring and fell asleep. When Tom woke up, he took his line down one passage after another. He was willing to risk meeting Injun Joe if only he could find a way out. Tom had searched three passages with his kite string. At the end of the third passage, he saw a small hole in the cave wall. Tom pushed his head and shoulders through the hole. The Mississippi River was rolling by. Tom got Becky, and they dug their way to daylight. Some men came by in a skiff. Tom and Becky told them their story. The men found it hard to believe. The townspeople had searched for the lost children for three days. Prayers were said in every home. Everyone thought that Tom and Becky were gone for good. Mrs. Thatcher was very ill. She called for Becky every night. Aunt Polly's gray hair turned white. On the fourth night, the town's bells were rung. People ran into the streets shouting, Come out, come out, they're found. Tom and Becky were back. They were safe. Aunt Polly and Judge Thatcher, Becky's father, had a million questions for the missing children. It turned out we were five miles from town, explained Tom. Some boatmen found us and rowed us to their place. They gave us supper and made us rest for a few hours. Then they brought us home. Judge Thatcher thought Tom was the bravest boy alive. He thought Tom could be a great lawyer or a great soldier someday, and he was going to help him. Aunt Polly was pleased. She always knew that Tom was a wonderful boy. I hope this never happens to anyone else, she said. It won't, said Judge Thatcher. As soon as the kids were rescued, we sealed up the cave. We put up a thick iron door with three locks, and I have the keys. Judge Thatcher patted his pocket. Nobody will get lost in that cave again. Tom turned as white as a sheet. What's the matter, boy, asked Judge Thatcher. Oh, Judge, said Tom. Injun Joe's in that cave. Judge Thatcher sent a dozen boats to McDougal's cave. Tom felt sorry for Joe. 
He knew what it was like to be lost in a cave. It was the worst feeling in the world. When the rescues, rescuers opened the iron door, they found Joe on the ground. He was dead. There were deep cuts on the door where Joe had tried to break out with his knife. Joe was buried at the mouth of the cave. People flocked for miles around to attend the poor man's funeral. After the funeral, Tom found Huck. He had something important to tell him. Tom knew where the treasure was hidden.